Good morning. Good marvelous Monday morning. The sun is out. The birds are chirping. The flowers want to come up, but they refuse to because it was 40 degrees this morning. This is why people are sick. It was 74 on Friday, and it is 40 degrees today. It is very, very weird. Y'all say a prayer for my little buddy, Evelyn. She has been super sick for a few days, and... We hope it's just head congestion and crazy sinus stuff from what's in the air. Pollen is in the air. Even though it's 40 degrees, there's pollen in the air. So stay inside, have your second cup of coffee, spend the morning with us. I hope that you're having a great, great morning. And I hope that this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful, beautiful week. I have some great things planned this week, and I'm really excited. Tomorrow, I'm going to meet with an arborist in Ball Ground who is working on a project that is so very, very near to my heart. And uh, I'm so excited we're going to be able to share that with you. We've shown you some photos in the past of this beautiful Indian tree that is being preserved in the city of Ball Ground, And it is a part of a great, great legacy. There's also another part of a legacy that I'm really excited to share with you. And I didn't know until just a few minutes ago when I was talking with our developer, when a bridge was redone and it started with the base of an old truck, I didn't realize the truck was actually had a tag on it. And as they sandblasted and redid this bridge, they maintained the tag, which I think is really, really cool. So we're going to get to share some of that. We're going to be naming the bridge. We're going to be have a little dedication ceremony. It is really, really cool that we are preserving the past and embracing the future. And the future of ball ground, the future of North Georgia is bright. Yeah, the interest rates have gone up, but it's not stopping people from buying. They're coming here with their cash and they're coming here with their positive attitudes and we welcome them and it's wonderful. Right now, I'm looking for a home for some folks from Miami and we have a budget three to 350 for them. That's a tough one to hit, so if you have something in that price point and you'd like to share it with me, please pick up the phone and call me, and uh, let's get together and let's sell that house. So, I have some photos today that are very special. One of them is of something that, um, until six weeks ago, I, I didn't know anything about this young man, and he lives right down the road. I actually pass his house every single morning. And this is this is my buddy, Justin Haynes. Justin Haynes. Justin <laughs> Justin Haynes, that's not Justin Haynes. Justin, who came and helped me with an open house yesterday. We had the sweetest time because our host was Freddie the dog. Freddie is a golden doodle. I have never been around one of the, those dogs before. And he has a personality plus. He's hyperallergenic, he doesn't shed, and he doesn't bark unless he sees another dog. So we had a great, great open house. We have that property under contract. It was a really, really good day. So to Justin for coming and helping me and being there. Um, it's always nice to have somebody around to kind of knock ideas off. What do you think we ought to do with this part of the house? And what about this? And what about this? That house the colors used in it are perfect because they are the colors of the Cherokee. And I just told him from the first moment we went in there, I said, this house has the sweetest spirit. And it uses the colors of the meadows, the colors of the dirt, and the colors of the sun, and the colors of the sky. And that's what the Cherokee taught, that you use those colors in your home, and it just makes for harmony in your home. So I love that. We had a really, really good day and got it under contract. Yay, thank you very much. Now, our little friend Freddie is going to be moving to a new place, but, but what, what a good day. It was a rainy, cold, miserable day, but it was a good, good day, and I think we have to look at every day as a good, good day. Today, I'm going to introduce you to somebody in just a little bit that um, every day to him is a really good day because he was saved later in life. He turned his life around. He is giving back to others as he does a four-mile walk every day. Come rain, sleet, snow, shine, it doesn't matter. He's doing this walk through Easter, and so this is very appropriate that we share that. We're going to share Matthew's story with you in just a little bit. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Um, the, the burden that he carries is an 80 to 90 pound cross, and you're going to get to see all of that shortly. So um, it's blows my mind, but we all have the ability to give back and to smile and to share love, and that's what life is about. 
Right now, I'm going to share something with you that y'all are going to love because if you weren't at Bonnie Higdon Reeves on Saturday night and you missed the Barker Brothers, I'm going to give you just a little taste of it. There was a little comedy, there was a little fun, there was a little music, and there was a little heart in this because the heart of the community came together and, and is giving back to help maintain this beautiful, beautiful facility that is all about education. It has been for many, many years and they want to continue education in this building. So I hope that you were there that night, got to see a lot of our viewers and got to see a lot of sweet folks and got to see Jen and I can say she is um, doing good. She's doing good. She was a little peaked. You know what peaked means? Y'all know what peaked means, don't you? That means you get your makeup and you go down one more tone darker. I've had to do that a little bit because sometimes I look peaked. So, but she's doing good, but continue to pray for her as she continues to do those treatments and uh, is beating and battling cancer. So that's what it's about, beat it and battle it. Now, we're going to go to a little bit of the Barker Brothers. I loved that they ended with Rocky Top. They weren't going to. They weren't going to do as much music as they did. But when they get requests, things change. And little gentlemen requested some stuff. And so it was really cool. It was really neat to see them back on stage. So we're going to share some of that with you. Then we're going to do a commercial break. Then when we come back, you're going to get to meet our friend, Ball Grounds, I guess you would say he's been there all of his life, but all of a sudden people are taking notice of Matthew and people are talking about Matthew and people are sharing Matthew's story because as he carries that 80 to 90 pound cross around ball ground, he is carrying a lot of burdens, a lot of our burdens, a lot of the Lord's burdens, a lot of burdens, but he is stirring up the community to remember what Jesus did on that day and he gave his life for us. We'll be back shortly.
I'll be safe when you go home this evening. We appreciate you coming out. It's for a good cause. This is a worthy place. And I want to tell you, it's uh, been good to have this facility in this community. Jody even attended college here, took some college courses. Uh, we really, we're appreciative for what they've done for us. And uh, we just, uh, just want to tell you, a lot of people have put a lot of effort into it over the years. I know it's demanded a lot of them. We appreciate it. Give them a hand, if you will. We will. So we're going to let these guys do it. Then we're going to do one more. And you'll get home. Don't forget to set your clocks back. I mean, look. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank
We do want to welcome everyone. We greatly appreciate your support. My name is Jane Brackett, and I'm currently the president of EMRCC, which is the abbreviation, which is easier than saying that big long name. Um, but I would first like to recognize our current council members, um, Becky Guthrie is our vice president, Joyce Mitchell, Jim Cole is our secretary,
whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. notice that today is the 13th. It is lucky 13 because we are lucky enough that our friend Scotty Calhoun was born on this day. So happy, happy birthday to Scotty, who is Evelyn's um, partner in crime. They're married and they run a very successful business and they're smart and hardworking and happy, happy birthday to Scotty. And happy heavenly birthday to James Willis Smith, who went to be with the Lord way, way, way too soon, way too soon, many years ago as a young man. Um, happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday. Now, I want to introduce you to somebody that I think you're going to um, get to know a little bit because we're going to do multiple interviews with him as we change the subject because after I interviewed Matthew, the next thing we talked about was forgiveness, and um, we went into detail about some things that I said, oh, Matthew, I wish we were recording this. We need to share it. Today, we're going to share just an interview that we just sat down and kind of let him introduce himself. And if you're sitting in ball ground and you're saying, I've seen that guy with the cross, you're going to get to learn a little bit more about him right now. So we're going to share this. Here's a photo of Matthew with the cross, and when you think about he walks four miles a day carrying a, curse, uh, a cross that is, it could be a curse for some because it could be a burden for some because it is so heavy. It is so hard to carry for four miles, but this young man does it every single day. He will continue doing this through Easter. 
and I think that's what uh, almost a month away so he has another almost a month to carry this cross and he certainly doesn't see it as a burden he sees it as an opportunity to open the door and open the eyes of people who aren't sure about that cross and I love that he's sharing this story as he walks through ball ground so you're going to get to meet him right now as we go to the cross Hey y'all, welcome to a little visit to Ball Ground, Georgia with a very, very special man that I think almost everybody in Ball Ground has figured out who you are. Can you please introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about you? Uh, my name is Matthew Bennett. Uh, I am a long time child of the town of Ball Ground. I grew up here and lived here off and on my whole life. I am 39 years old, uh, shooting for 40 uh and a lover of jesus christ absolutely i met you maybe what six weeks ago when you were walking through town carrying something very special yes very very special to a christian tell me what you carry every day i have been toting a cross and bearing it uh for jesus mm -hmm. uh to show my love for him as well as his love for me and everybody else here on this earth as well as my love for mankind. Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew, the one thing that we all are afforded is the gift of Jesus. And it doesn't cost us anything. We don't have to fill out an application. We just have to ask him and submit to him. How easy is that? Uh, it is not that easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh my thought on it is, is that there is a generational curse that separates us from getting in contact with God. And mm -hmm. it could be lots of things, fear, uh, steps of rejection, or things that we carry as our own cloak, for se. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been passed down ever since Adam and Eve. Right, right. And sometimes a bit of stubbornness. Well, I can handle it and I can do it. I, yeah. I've had a little of that stubbornness. Oh, I can handle it on my own. No, we can't. I'm no, we can't. Very yeah. Individual. Yes, we're kidding ourselves. Now, when you started this path with that cross that weighs approximately 70 pounds, is that right? No, it is, uh, is it between 80 and 90 pounds. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. Wow. And it's made of what? It's made of uh, four by six uh, crusher treated timbers. Mm -hmm. And is that what adds the weight? Because would a different wood be lighter? Is it because it's pressure treated that it's so heavy? Uh, yeah, pressure treated and the size of the lumber makes a difference. Well, I was going to ask you that. Did you choose that size lumber? Couldn't you have carried a smaller cross? Did you feel it necessary to carry that huge cross? Uh, it's what he told me to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he told me how big he wanted it. He told me that I needed to do it because uh, he has saved me from all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, my life on multiple occasions. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, he has forgiven me solely, and I know it mm -hmm. within my heart and my mm -hmm. soul, uh, which I felt undeserving of it which it is unfavor unfavorable is what grace is is unfavorable forgiveness yep. so that means that it doesn't matter it's not on a scale that he will forgive anybody and everybody mm -hmm. i think it's one john or first john 1 9 that states that uh if we confess our sins he is just and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Which that means that he wipes the slate clean every mm -hmm. time we do that. Mm -hmm. so. Can we talk a little bit about your history? Did your mom look at you and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe my son is doing this? Was she amazed at the turnabout in your life? Uh, she, uh, when I told her what I was going to do, she, she had the question of what? What do you mean? What do you, why, is yeah. what she asked me. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I told her why, uh, which my mom knows a lot about me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because uh, she's 
seen me grow, you know. Mm -hmm. she, and there for a long time, uh, she always was my rock. And still, still is. Mm -hmm. But I don't place as much of my my thoughts and the things that I had experienced as far as hard times on her because I mm -hmm. don't want her to have to bear the weight of worry. Mm -hmm. You know, she lost a lot of sleep over the years on account of me. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know? And you think about your mom, your dad, we all lose sleep over our children. We all worry. But, you know, God is up all night long worrying about all his children. He is. And he is waiting for those who haven't come to him to just come to him. Exactly. And when you think about what you do, was it a 40-day, you did it for 40 days, and then did you stop? I did for one day. And how did that feel? Uh, I felt relief because I was tired. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and you walk about two, two and a half hours a day with 80 pounds on your back? Uh, well, it started off, it took me three hours the first day that I'd done it. Mm -hmm. And it was to walk four miles. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrying and, 80 pounds? Yeah. Of the cross of Jesus? Yes. Wow. And uh, it has gotten a lot, a lot easier. Uh, but I do... I. I pray before I take each walk. Mm -hmm. And it's for strength and mm -hmm. for the Holy Spirit. And I I want the eyes to see that it it is possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more than possible. And the purity of heart and the pureness of a heart uh, is what makes God and his miracles what he is. And I can't even really find the words to really describe what he is and how mm -hmm. good he is. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because Webster just ain't got it. Mm -mm. They do not. They mm -hmm. do not. No. I think about the times in my life that um, it was God. It was God. There are times over and over that there's no other answer for why what happened happened. Mm -hmm. There's no answer for their survival. There's no answer for the change. There's no answer but God. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Now, do you now share when you're walking? Do you stop and tell people? Because the day I stopped and, and talked to you, I was thinking about a song that Hank Williams Sr. did many years ago called Your Burdens Are Greater. Mm -hmm. And your burdens may be greater than mine. My burdens may be greater than yours. But we all have burdens. Do people mm -hmm. stop and talk to you about their burdens? Some people do. Uh, there's been very few and in between that have uh, stopped and said anything about most burdens, but the expression on a lot of people's face shows the burden. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for many years, I was held down by my own burdens. Mm -hmm. You know, I carried a lot of guilt, shame, and remorse over some of the actions that I had walked through or being confused and not understanding why things was the mm -hmm. way that was. And I mean, I got several stories that points to God. Uh, it's like I have a mentally disabled brother that has to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I help my mother take care of him today. Mm -hmm. When I was a young boy, I got, my mom also raised cats, had a cattery, and she had uh dogs mm -hmm. and I couldn't I couldn't even she was offering me a substantial amount of money for a young kid to go out here and clean mm -hmm. piles of mm -hmm. dung out of the yard and you didn't I got one and a half piles wow and I was you know it turned my stomach and I mm -hmm. was puking and gagging and but today you know it doesn't doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't only that. I mean, I've had to work in a horse, for, you know, out on farms, mm -hmm. scooping poop. Oh, I, yeah. wor I worked at the chicken plant mm -hmm. and then finally got to where I went into live hang and first bird pooped right in my face. So you found a strength you didn't know you had. I did. Yeah. God yeah. gave it to me. Yeah, now the day that you found Jesus, can you describe a little bit about the difference in you? Was it an immediate difference? Did you immediately feel different? Did you say, this is what it's about? How did that feel for you? 
to being saved is a uh, feeling that is indescribable. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, I felt warm, and cold. It made me weep. It made me laugh. It made, it brought me to my knees. Is what mm-hmm. it did. Mm-hmm. I weep like a baby. Mm-hmm. And that's happened more than once that he has done this for me. Did he make you feel loved? I, he does. And he yeah. does on a day-to-day basis today. Yeah. I, yeah. Can, I can yeah. feel the presence of God in a day-to-day walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I know what he's done for me. You know, Because uh, my heart had been scattered all over the place. Mm-hmm. And he had gathered every one of them pieces and has mended it back together. What about I, that? I feel whole today. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable in my own skin. As a matter of fact, I can feel him on me now. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Now, did you look like you look before you started being a Christian? Because you have the beard like Jesus. You have the hair like Jesus. Did you become, if I had met you five years ago, would you have looked the same? Uh, five years ago, I probably would have had more of a lower uh, haircut. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was a child, I had a, my hair was growed out, uh, but it didn't lay down. Mm-hmm. It was, it's, I, I had uh, a poofy head like a microphone. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, wow. Uh, I done that for a little while, but mm-hmm. eventually I cut it off. And then uh, this is. Uh, part of a uh, fulfillment of a promise that I made uh, to my father before he passed away. Because mm-hmm. uh, I never seen my dad up until the day that he, about a couple months before he died, uh, he always had long hair. Wow. He always had a beard down mm-hmm. here, half, mm-hmm. hair halfway down his back. Mm-hmm. Did your father get to see you as a Christian? Uh, not exactly, no. I, he, his death was rough on me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he got cancer, and within four or five months, he, I mean, it ate him alive. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I was out of town at the time, uh, out in Charlotte, North Carolina, chasing ice storms, doing wow. tree work. And I asked him before I left, I said, you going to be all right until I get back? He says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He says, you go ahead and go. Well... What in four days he done went from walking around to paralyzed and was in hospice at the hospital. So I rushed mm. home. I went and seen him. They had him tied down to the bed and he's flipping out. I mean, it was a rough. Sure it is. Sure it is. And you get through things like that because God is there for you. I do, yes. Yeah. God, God is, yeah, the mm-hmm. one that had showed me love and showed me a lot of things mm-hmm. uh, because a lot of almost most of the hardest things I've dealt with in life which I've had to deal with what I thought was on my own uh, which is not the way I see it today because mm-hmm. I know God was with me when mm-hmm. I couldn't walk he carried me mm-hmm. you know when I stumble and I fall on my face he picks me up and he does his off my shoulder just a little mm-hmm. bit. Right? And then he's like, pats me on the back, gives me a hug, and does me, you know, go on. You know what I was thinking about the first time I saw you walking, carrying that cross? And I had I had a broken shoulder. Actually, it was totally dislocated from my body. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember the pain. And I thought that day, I thought the next time I feel like whining about my shoulder and having a little bit of arthritis in it now, I'm going to slap myself because your shoulder has to be the strongest shoulder I've ever seen. You are carrying the weight of the world on your shoulder because you're carrying a cross. It is, uh, it is, I mean, I can't really put the words into it. Mm -hmm. I know it was rough and uh, to start off with, and I can't say that I, when I get done, that it ain't sore, but I wake up in the morning and I get out of bed. I might be a little sore for 20, 30 minutes, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden I feel like I'm in my 20s again. Wow. Wow. Now, what about children? Do children stop and talk to you, and do they question, what is he doing? 
I have seen a lot of uh, children, uh, younger children, and I can hear them from a distance be like, oh, look, he's carrying the cross. And I've mm -hmm. had a couple people stop me and uh, one lady particular and said that her, kid, her kids was uh, saying, look, it's Jesus. And I was... Wow. Now that, oh my gosh. Man, yeah. it almost... Mm -hmm. I'm not Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> but... Yeah. But he is inside you. Oh, yes. Yes. He yeah. is working in me and through me. Yeah. In uh, ways that I can't even wrap my head around. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I... How many people do you think have come to know him because of you? I have. Because even if one came to him because of you, you've it. done your job. Yes, yes, it is worth it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, now we're approaching Easter. Is that a special time for you? When you think about there is an empty tomb? Uh, yeah. I mean, Jesus conquered death. Mm -hmm. And he rose. And that is one of the ways into heaven. And that's part of the reason why I carry the cross. Because I want awareness <laughs> Like I said, not only does he love everybody, but I have a genuine love for everybody. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean I like everything everybody does, or I don't even like all the things I've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that being said, if it can open the eye that somebody can seek out upon Jesus mm -hmm. and build upon a personal relationship and believe that he carried and his blood was shed. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. all of our sins that mm -hmm. we had away into heaven and that he conquered the grave means that we'll conquer the grave mm -hmm. if we believe in faith. That's right. You know, in today's world, we're seeing, um, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it because we grew up in a society that it was Sunday morning, Sunday you go to church, then you have lunch with your family. Most businesses weren't open. It was very different. It was very different growing up when I did because Sunday was a family day. Yeah. And sadly, um, most businesses are open now and most people are working on Sunday. A lot of people work on Sunday. Yeah. So do you think we've gotten away from the family values that, that really made America as great as it was? Family is important. And it, it speaks of it biblically, honor mm -hmm. your mother, honor your father. Uh, and that... Uh, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Well, yeah, I was going to say that the first two commandments set the motion of all the rest of the commandments, mm -hmm. which was love thy God with all your might and your soul. And eat the second one being love your neighbor as thyself. So if we're able to, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put it like this. I believe that love is the most powerful thing there is. I agree. Period. I agree. I mean, it, it will always over seed anything that is going on. Mm -hmm. Is it always easy to do for us humans? No. It really isn't uh, because people want to hold grudges or there's greed or entitlement or all these things that is of negative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of being able to count upon the blessings and holding on to what love is all about because mm -hmm. every bit of this out here from... I mean, I can look at the trees, mm -hmm. to the way the clouds form. Uh, and this to, beautiful to, day it, we've been blessed it, with. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And even when it rains, it's still mm -hmm. beautiful. I was going to mention that because I came home from work one day, and it was falling a flood, and you were walking, carrying the cross. And I called some of my friends, and I said, oh, my God. I said, remember the man I told you about? I said, he's walking in the pouring down rain. And I thought, what a commitment. What a commitment. Yeah, I've had to do that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about forgiveness? How do you feel about forgiveness? Did, did God forgive all of us for everything we've ever done? I think yes. he did. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, and forgiveness is, that's something that I had to learn about forgiveness is that, uh, cause I, I've always, it's always been easy for me to forgive other people. Mm -hmm. It has been my whole life. Uh, the one that was hard to forgive was myself. Mm -hmm. And it, it hit me one day that I'm sitting there not forgiving myself and thinking that I was forgiving others or I was asking for forgiveness from God, but yet taking it back and holding on to it myself. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I wasn't forgiving anything. Right. I wasn't accepting the forgiveness of what grace is, what God's grace is really about. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I say, the first 40 days of this walk, uh, it was to draw an awareness, like I say, of my love for him, his love for me, his love for you and everybody else, and my love for you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I, after them 40 days, I didn't go that next Friday. I didn't walk. Saturday he, morning, he told me to pick it up and walk again. I walked. A woman uh, actually came to me and said that she had been crying for the last three days, carrying a burden, and been asking God to give her a sign. And then she sees me carrying this cross. Man, it makes my skin crawl. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. You have been, I think, out of, I've, you know, Ball Ground is a small community, and we all talk, and we all share stories, and we all share grief. We all share happiness. We all share everything. But I think you have formed something in Ball Ground that we never saw before. We all see each other differently now. We see him as we see ourselves as he sees us because you're just a guy. You're just a guy. Mm -hmm. But you forgive and you love and you unconditionally have made a commitment to bring Christ to everybody. And that's pretty amazing. You're not a Baptist preacher, but I bet you like fried chicken. You like fried I, chicken? I like fried chicken. I like food in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So so you've set out only basically to to do as God commanded. Did you realize how many people you would touch? And did you think about you've changed this whole town? God has changed. God has changed this town. You're right. It's not me. I'm just the vessel. You're right. You're right. Now, can I ask you a little bit about your mama? How's she doing health-wise? Uh, she has up and downs. Mm -hmm. She's on oxygen all the time. Uh, you know, uh, I thought I was going to lose her back several months ago. It was rough. Mm -hmm. uh, but she made it. That's awesome. God, God pulled her through. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, you see that she sign up there? It says, God knew my heart needed you. I bet God knew that your heart needed your mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about your special needs brother? Tell me about that. How do you? How does she handle that? She, uh, she's been taking care of him practically her whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I say, uh, I don't know. I guess about off and on for about the last three years. One day, out of nowhere, she was she called me into the bedroom. She's like, look, I want to show you how to do this. In case something happened in to her. In case something uh, happened and it needed to be done. She's like, uh, here, I want you to do this. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't. I said, if the time comes, I, I'll do it back then. Well, it wasn't a week, maybe two weeks that time come. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's every day thing. Mm -hmm. It has to be done. So today I get him up for school, uh, get him ready. He goes to the learning center. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes home. My mama's boyfriend might as well be her husband. He's mm -hmm. been around for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, he gets him off the bus, or if I'm not there, he steps in and tries to do what needs mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but my brother is 33 years old. So uh, he's stout as an ox. Mm. It's surprising considering that his arms ain't no bigger around and, you know, a little more than a 
50 cent piece. <laughs> and as a mom, the love of a mother never goes away. Mm -hmm. So your brother, you know, your mother could have said, oh my gosh, I've, I've been cursed, I've been burdened, I've been this, but she's taken it on and she has done her, her job. She's done her job. And without God, she couldn't have done that job. No, no. No, she couldn't have done it. No. I, my, my mama tells me, I mean, which I've never, I've never been to church with my mother. Uh, I was never made to go to church. I can't even say that I go to church today. Mm -hmm. But I do talk with God. Mm -hmm. I do read his word. And mm -hmm. I do try to show kindness in my walk today and that's with everywhere mm -hmm. uh people ask me uh how i'm doing used to it be all right or i'm okay or this and that and the other but today is it's not, i'm blessed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm loved and i'm forgiven mm -hmm. you know and that is the way that i i start my day mm -hmm. and it makes my day just way off on a better start. Yeah. 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 I love it. And and I see your eyes are so it's almost like your eyes are I'm a happy soul. You know how you look in some people's eyes and they look like they are Satan possessed. Yeah. Your eyes just look like you are a happy soul. And I said to me, that is just the sweetest statement to, to be able to look in your eyes and see just kindness. Yeah, well, it, you know, my eyes was are blue, are mm -hmm. supposed to be blue. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been looking in the mirror, and to the best of my knowledge, I see a lot of yellow mm -hmm. here lately. Uh, and it's just, it's God is what it is. He does. He continues to hug my heart and my mm -hmm. soul. And I know uh, only a piece mm -hmm. of what it really is. Mm -hmm. But I, f I feel it. Mm -hmm. I feel it today. And and if, if everybody could just say kindness and forgiving and, and knowing that God's grace is here for all of us. Mm -hmm. That's that's all it takes, and turn that bitterness around, and yeah. and I know you've been through so much, but you've come so far, and now it's almost like you're starting a, a leadership of a village, because Ballground is just a little village of people, yeah, and everybody's talking about that guy with the cross, that guy with the cross, and they're also talking about that guy with the cross has something on his mind and his heart that he wants to share. And I'm so glad that we were able to do that today. Mm -hmm. I hope that our viewers will continue to watch you. And if folks are coming to ball ground and they have a question, they want to stop and talk to you. You're free to. Yeah, that would be yeah. so cool. That would be so cool because people just don't understand. Um, as we approach Easter, it's all about that cross, and it's all about that empty tomb. It is. And I think it's a perfect time for people to really get to know you. And again, um, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the bringing awareness. Thank you for bringing our community closer together. And thank you for sharing the love of Jesus. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you so God. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to my friend of 52 years. I was thinking about that the other day. I got a call, and uh, Gene Hyde said, I have an idea. I want you to interview this guy. What do you think about the guy carrying the cross? And I said, Gene, I've stopped and talked to him, and I told him what a blessing he was to the community. And so we set up the interview, and I'm so very, very thankful for that. So, again, um, and today when you pray, please say a prayer for Gene and Carolyn. A year ago, they lost their precious son, Chris, to COVID, and... Um, so many of us, so many of our folks in our audience, so many of our viewers have lost someone in the past year or so. And somebody asked me the other day, they said, when does it get better? I don't know. I'll let you know when it does. Um, it's tough. So um, today, say a prayer for everybody who's hurting. And to my dear sweet friend who made the flowers that are behind me that you can't see because of my big old head full of hair. But um, hope she got some good news on her MRI last Wednesday. I ask y'all to pray for her and please continue to do that. 
We're going to leave you now with one of my favorite selections by Mr. Sam, Mr. Mr. Ella J, Mr. Dwight Sanford, and his buddies, the Davis Brothers. So here we go. Have a great day, y'all. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Why do? Welcome, folks, to the little cabin across from Ace in Ella J, Georgia. Here's a song that my grandpa, Bill Sanford, used to sing. In church, I'd see him up there wearing that brown suit. He'd sing this song every Sunday. In the Bible, we read of a city with streets that are paved with pure gold. We'll live in that city.